श्रीमद भागवत वन टू ट्वेंटी एट एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन इट्स कंबाइन टूगेदर एस वन सेम थॉट इज गोइंग ऑन वासुदेव परा वेदा वासुदेव परा मख वासुदेव परा योगा वासुदेव परा क्रिया वासुदेव परम ज्ञान वासुदेव परम तप वासुदेव परो धर्मो वासुदेव परा गति इन दिस सेक्शन द भागवतम इज कंपेरिंग डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ वर्शिप From 1.2.6 to 22, 1.2.6 declared that bhakti is the topmost process. That was philosophically explained by comparing with other processes in the first section till 1415, and then how bhakti leads to purification and liberation was described from 16 to 22, and then this section is describing how bhakti should be. directed towards bhagavan towards adhokshaja so the previous verses stated that bhakti is meant for the supreme the uh, that samashila bhajanti vai that people worship according to their mentalities and we need to so those who are spamukshu anasuya va those who are seeking liberation those who are non envious they should worship the transcendental form of the lord that was what was mentioned so now here the point that we made is that vasudeva Paraveda, that the Vasudev, the object, supreme object of worship. What is his nature? He is Paraveda. So how Vasudev is the ultimate culmination of everything will be talked about in this verse. So that Vasudev is Paraveda. He is the ultimate goal of the Vedas. प्राइमरी religious forms advocated in the vedas is sacrifice so in that sense the first and the second item are connected this verse these two verses 28 and 29 are essentially conveying how vasudev is the ultimate purpose of everything in the bhagavad gita in 7.19 krishna says vasudev sarvamiti So Mahatma is Durlabha. The one who understands that Vasudev is everything, such a Mahatma is Durlabha, is rare. So Krishna is conveying that rarity by talking about the problems by talking about how people who get distracted diverted by thinking about various subject matters they can all come closer to the supreme they can come closer to krishna they can focus on attaining krishna when they understand that krishna is the goal so now in the fire sacrifice yagya ha asudeva paramakha is said over here in the yagya there are many different people who are worshiped there is yagya that is offered to indra to surya to chandra to kuvera to brahma to shiva but aham hi sarva yagya nam bhukta cha prabhure va chalutu bam vijananti tat वेनाश्च वंति 
Vishnu explains in the ninth chapter that he is the Yajneshwara, he is the ultimate bhokta of all the Yajnas. And the Yajnic Brahmanas, they do all the rituals very nicely, but they forget the object who is to be ultimately worshipped by all the rituals. And that missing knowledge their wives have. And thus the Bhagavatam illustrates that ritual proficiency is of little use if there is, if it distracts one from the ultimate purpose. And to prevent such a distraction, the Bhagavatam right up front tells us that Vasudeva Paramakaha. So he is the ultimate objective of all sacrifices. So Vasudeva Para Yoga, Vasudeva Para Kriya, Vasudeva Para Yoga. In 6.47, the Bhagavad Gita Krishna says that Yogina Bhupi Sarvesha. Madgate nantaratmana shradhavan bajite yoma same yukta tabomataha. So he says that among all the people, among all the different kinds of yogis, the yogis who fix their mind on him, they are the most intimately united with him. They are the topmost yogis. So in the process of yoga, people start by focusing on the tip of the nose or the space between the eyebrows. Then they turn inwards, they try to conceptualize some object to focus on. But at the end of it all, they understand that Krishna and Vishnu are the ultimate object of worship. They are the ultimate object, sorry, not of worship, but of meditation. So he is the ultimate goal of yoga. Patanjali does talk about Ishwar Pranidhan in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, but he doesn't tell exactly who is the Ishwara. To whom pranidhan, to whom surrender is to be done, whose worship is to be done. And that is because Yoga Sutra is a short, succinct text focusing on the techniques of yoga and they presume awareness about the object of yoga. That object of yoga is revealed in the Bhagavad Gita very explicitly and ambiguously to be Krishna. And Vasudeva Parakriya. Kriya means various kind of activities. Kriya Vishesh Bhaulam. Bhogaishwari Gatim Prati. So Kriya Vishesh Bhaulam. Krishna talks about this in the Bhagavad Gita. 42.43-43 that Yam Nam Pushpita Vacham Pradhanta Vipashita Veda Badrata Partha Nani the Stiti Vadinaha Kama Atman Haswarga Para Janma Karma Fala Pradam Kriya Vishesh Bhulam Bhogeshwari Gatim Prati So there Krishna states that there is no way One can attain the supreme perfection if one doesn't understand that he is the ultimate purpose. Krishna calls such people as Abhipashchitaha. They are non-discerning. So they perform elaborate sacrifices. Kriya, Vishesh, Bhaulam. Elaborate rituals they perform. Yajna is one important ritual but there are various other aspects to the performance of rituals also. So Vasudeva Parakriya, that means Krishna is the ultimate objective in performing the various ritual sacrifices. Vasudeva Param Jnanam, Vasudeva Param Tapaha Vasudeva Param Jnanam that the path of Jnana involves cultivation of knowledge and such knowledge is important at the same time we need to recognize that knowledge is in and of itself 
not complete knowledge has to be about something and when that something is the highest reality then knowledge becomes the highest knowledge has to have an object and krishna is the highest object of knowledge yanam ye yam yana dam yam vigsarvasya vishtitam 13th chapter is it gyanam yeyam yana gamyam knowledge object of knowledge and goal of knowledge is krishna is ultimately all of these so what is the difference between the object of knowledge and goal of knowledge if we may study the material world but our goal is not the material world per se our goal is krishna students may study may study a particular subject but they they may not be really interested in that subject they may their interest may be in the marks that they get their interest may be in the money that they earn the position that they acquire through that learning so when the we have to make krishna both the object of our knowledge and the goal of our knowledge when we study the world we see it as krishna's energy and we are not interested in the world itself we are interested in krishna whose glory we may appreciate by studying the world so vasudeva param gyanam means that the purpose and perfection of all knowledge is to know vasudev bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan maam prapadyate when the person becomes gyanavan krishna says maam prapadyate it means the person who is truly in knowledge surrenders to krishna knowing krishna to be everything vasudeva sarvam iti as in 19 here it is vasudeva param gyanam we see this is the example of shukadev goswami that he surrendered to krishna become although he had impersonal knowledge he turned away rose from that impersonal knowledge towards personal knowledge when he understood how krishna is the highest reality ियर is vasudev sometimes austerity can become an end itself end in itself where one does austerity to and tortures one's body without understanding what is the purpose of it all may this chhed phalani the mukundamala stotra kul shekhar mara says that hey if one doesn't understand the absolute one doesn't under, remember vishnu while performing austerities while fasting then austerity simply becomes a fat reducing exercise and nothing more austerity doesn't purify or elevate it simply entraps a person if one doesn't understand mm, krishna to be the ultimate goal of the austerity we see further that krishna says in the 17th chapter karshayanta sharirastham maam jayanta sharirastham muta gram machita sa tan vidya asura nishchayan krishna says that those who torment their body and torment me who are present in their body such people 
वासुदेव परो धर्मो वासुदेव परागति वासुदेव परो धर्मो द वर्ड धर्मा हैज मेनी मीनिंग्स एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू धर्मा हैज मेनी लेवल्स सो देयर कैन बी अ धर्मा ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग वन्स टेकिंग केयर ऑफ वन्स हेल्थ एंड मेकिंग श्योर दैट द बॉडी दैट वी हैव बीन गिवन वी मेंटेन इट प्रॉपर्ली देयर कैन बी अ धर्मा टू आवर फैमिली वेयर वी आर सेल्फ सैक्रिफाइजिंग फॉर द सेक ऑफ टेकिंग केयर ऑफ आवर फैमिली then beyond that there can be the dharma of taking care of one's uh one's community kula dharma can be there and like that there can be various levels of dharma uh, and is in the bhagavad gita krishna says sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam raja I'd give up all varieties of religion and just surrender to me. What he means there is that there are levels of dharma, and give up the lower levels of dharma so that the highest dharma of devotion to Krishna, surrender to Krishna, ma me kam sharanam raja, that can be adhered to. So, so Masudev is the object of the highest dharma. The word paro dharma is also being used in 1.2.6. So we pum sam paro dharma. Ye to bhaktir dhokshe je. Ahi to ki apritita yatma suprasiddhi. Paro dharma is that dharma which involves practicing uninterrupted, unmotivated devotion to the Lord who is beyond our senses. Vasudeva paragati. and this was concludes by declaring that vasudev is our ultimate goal tadatmanas tannishthas tat parayana tad buddhas tadatmanas tannishthas tat parayana gacchanti apnaravrittim gyana nirdhuta kalmashah in 5.17 krishna states that tan nishthas tat parayana fix your confidence on him fix your mind on him fix your shelter faith in him and fix your goal in him make him your goal if we don't understand krishna to be the goal then the world can appear to be like a big big forest of delusion and not only the world can appear even vedic scriptures can appear to be like a forest of delusion nidate moha kallam buddhir viditarishyati उदागंता then we can move onwards steadily towards life's ultimate perfection and we can thus attain success in our life so he is the ultimate so without this this knowledge that vasudev is the ultimate goal is the perfect purpose and perfection of our life this is this is the crux of all vedic literature and read of all wisdom vasudev paragati hi Thirtieth text. So evedam, so so sarjagre, Bhagwan Atma Maya ya, sad sad rupa ya chaso, gun Maya gun obi bhu. So eva that that absolute truth has been talked about in the previous verse. Certainly idam so sar sarjagre, so sarjagre. 
Sasarja is creation. Sarga we say. The Sasarja Agre in the beginning. Bhagavan Atma Maya. That Bhagavan created it by his own energy. Atma Maya. Sat Asad Rupa Rupa Yacha so. Sat Asad. It sometimes refers to temporary and eternal, eternal and temporary, sadasad, or it also refers to cause and effect. Sadasad, rupaya chasau. So, rupaya, the various forms in material existence were created by him. Guna maya aguno vibhu. Guna maya. So, these forms are made of gunas. Everything in the material world is made of three modes, but aguna. Aguno Vibhu, there is the Vibhu, the Absolute is Agunaha. So now briefly in this chapter, the process of creation will be described to again reinforce the point that Vasudev is the source of all creation and therefore Vasudev should be the purpose of all of creation, the purpose of all of existence in this creation. So, sa evedam sa sarjagre. so that same Lord was mentioned in the previous verse. In the beginning, He created all material causes and effects, including the various forms of material nature. And despite doing all this, He remains transcendental. He is the absolute who remains transcendental. So, this, this verse points to both the Lord's uh, involvement in the process of in the process of creation at the same time His transcendence to the process of creation. He is involved because he is the source, he is the initiator, but he is himself not affected. He's, he remains transcendental. 31st text, Taya Vilasitteshva Eshu Guneshu Gunavaniva Antaha Pravishta Abhati Vijjane Navijrumbitaha Taya Vilasitteshva uh, so, for of, in the fun, that, by then, the function of this material world, Guneshu Gunavaniva. So, Guneshu Guneshu Gunavaniva. So, although the Supreme Lord enters into the muna, Gunas and appears to be one of them, Antaha Pravishta Abhati. Antaha Pravishta, he appears to have entered, and after having entered, he appears to have become like one of the beings who is within the modes of material nature, who has been created through the modes of material nature, but he remains transcendent. Vijjanena vijurumbitaha, vijjanena, with his knowledge, with his realization, vijurumbitaha, he remains fully enlightened, he remains fully transcendental. So the point of this discussion about <coughs> The Lord being the creator is to, is to also convey that he remains involved yet uh, as well as disinterested. He enters in but he remains transcendental because he is absolute. Now if we enter into cold water, if we enter into water we will become wet. We are naturally affected by our environment. If we enter into a cold weather, we will feel cold. But suppose we were wearing a, a sweater and other warm clothes, then we will not feel so hot, we will not feel so cold. Suppose we had a completely foolproof clothing by which nothing, no air from the atmosphere came to us. Then we would not be so affected. Then we would be able to stay pure and stay protect, uh, stay, uh, stay pure in the sense that we will still not stay, we will get affected by the temperature. So, just as normally if a person enters into an environment that person is affected but that person has some mechanism by which 
to counter the effects of the environment and the person will not be affected. So Krishna is like that. Krishna is himself completely transcendental and because he is transcendental, even when he enters into the material world, he is not affected by the material world. He still remains completely transcendental. Thirty-second text: Yatha ya abhito vahanir daharushwa ekhaswa yoni shu na ne vabhati vishvatma bhute shujatha puman yatha ya abhito vahanir. So this is a metaphor which comes repeatedly in the Bhagavatam. This comes in the eleventh canto also of the Uddhav Gita. Yatha ya abhito abhito means entering into surcharge with vahanir fire. Darushva ekha swayoni shu. Darushva in the wood. But swayoni shu naneva bhati. It appears, it burns differently. There's one fire, but depending on the kind of firewood it enters, kind of food it enters, uh, the fire burns differently. Bhute shu puman. So similarly, the Supreme Lord enters into different living beings and he may appear different but he is one and the same. If you consider the flame, then different kinds of flames they will be slightly different. If for example, if we have a, a flame coming from LPG through a, through a stove and we have a flame coming through firewood in a hearth, in a fireplace or if you consider the flame coming through a candle if you consider the flame coming through a lamp if you consider the flame coming through a firecracker now all is the same flame but depending on how the flame manifests the medium through which the flame is manifesting the flame will appear different similarly the super soul's presence is not perceived equally. Sometimes in a in a microscopic insect, microscope a microbe or a tiny insect. No, neither can the soul or the super soul be perceived at all. The consciousness is so covered over there. The super soul's consciousness is not covered. The soul's consciousness is covered, but the presence of neither the soul nor the super soul can be easily perceived over there. But when a person is extremely wise, a person is enlightened, and then whatever the person speaks, we feel oh is so profound. Sometimes in some insights some people speak, they are so penetrating. If, oh, this is the Supreme Lord, this must be Krishna speaking. And such wisdom comes out. So, uh, so just as fire can manifest differently in different beings, similarly, the super soul's presence, the super soul is present, but the super soul may not be perceivable in the same way in different places. Asau gunamayair bhavair bhuta sukshmendri atma bhi svanirmite shu nirvishto bhunte bhute shu tad gunan asau gunamayair bhavair so similarly asau that, that supreme lord gunamayair bhavair the material nature which is influenced by three modes bhuta sukshmendri atma bhi Sukshma Indriya, the subtle senses, Bhuta created subtle senses, the mind, uh, Atma Bhi, the living beings, Sva Nirviteshu Nirvishto, in his own creation Nirvishto, entering Bhumte Bhuteshu Tadgunan. So that super soul, he enters into all of living beings and within his own material, his own created material nature, with the senses, he enables, facilitates the living beings to enjoy the senses. Now, this may seem a little disturbing, isn't it? Isn't Krishna meant to liberate us from enjoyment? Why is it said that he uh, enables or he causes or he facilitates our enjoyment? Actually, without Krishna, not only can we not get purified, without Krishna, well, we cannot even enjoy sense gratification. Because as souls, we are different from the body and we can't control the body and the body is alien 
and the sense objects that we try to enjoy those objects are also dependent on him ultimately for example when we decide to eat some delicious object some delicacy some gulab jamun say now we don't even know how the tongue secret saliva how the gulab jamun at a subtle level interacts with the saliva and how the experience of taste occurs we just oh this is tasty let me enjoy this that's all we think and that's how and we move onwards we don't even realize that there's a whole complex process happening by which this enjoyment is taking place uh, so the, in this sense the system the setup of the system just like some children some children may play some games some video games or some games on their cell smartphone or on a computer uh, they are enjoying the game and they think oh i am winning i am losing but actually speaking without the whole game game setup uh, they would not be able to enjoy anything and they have not set up the game uh, they have not created the game they may have set it up installed it on their system but they have not created the game and they have not created the or all the infrastructure that is required for the video game to occur so like that for us to per play the game of sense gratification also it is krishna who creates the background it is krishna who sets up everything for us and when we understand how foundational and indispensable krishna's role is then we start becoming more and more conscious of him and that consciousness will ultimately rise to loving consciousness gradually through the process of purification and education 34th text bhavayat esha satvena lokan vai loka bhavanah leelavata ranurato devatiryan naradishu bhavayat esha satvena that bhavayatya the material or maintains here satvena through the mode of goodness he maintains lokan vai loka bhavanah this the all these lokan the universes along with loka bhavanah the masters of the universes leela avatara anurato so he descends through the avatar the dis, uh, the incarnations and leela uh, he performs leelas anurato assuming the various incarnation devatiryan naradishu and he descend uh, this devatiryan naradishu this can refer to both things mm. that it can either refer to that there are devatiryan and nara there are you the devatas all over animals and humans all of these are existing in this in these worlds or we could even say that the lord descends in these species so the verse is saying that krishna not only creates krishna not only enables our enjoyment but krishna maintains these worlds and krishna facilitates our liberation by descending in this world such is the complete compassion of the lord that he arranges everything including our liberation from material existence and the way he arranges it is by enabling us to become attracted to him through when he performs his leelas so now in the next text which are all the avatars that he takes not not in the next text next chapter rather uh, which are all the avatars that he takes will be described a list will be given and some analysis of the lord's relationship with the material world will be given in this chapter we see that there is there are various sections and the main thrust the setting is uh, done in the first four five verses and from the 622 for 6 to 15 the supremacy of bhakti over all other processes is talked about then 16 to 22 the potency of bhakti to bring about liberation is talked about then from 23 onwards 
uh, till 27 uh, or we could say till 29 how 23 to 27 is actually how Krishna uh, or Vasudev the form of goodness is to be worshipped that means bhakti uh, how bhakti is supreme how that was talked in 6 to uh, 15 and how bhakti works is talked from 16 to 22 and why bhakti needs to be directed towards Bhagavan towards the form and goodness that is Vishnu that is talked about in 23 to 27 and that section leads on to 28 to 29 just two verses how that supreme Vasudeva Krishna is the ultimate goal of everything that is talked about Vasudeva Paragati and lastly how that Lord creates the world, sustains the world facilitates our enjoyment in this world and ultimately arrange descends for liberating us from this world so in this way the chapter gives us first the glory of bhakti and then the glory of bhagavan who is the object of bhakti